Okay, we are on Baba Metzia Perik Dalid Mishnah Bet. Second Mishnah, the fourth chapter of Masech Baba Metzia. Okay, this Mishnah is directly a continuation of the last Mishnah. So if you're learning this Mishnah on its own, you won't understand a word of it until you go back and learn Dalid Aleph. Okay, so we last learned that Zahav Koneta Kesef, a Kesef Ina Koneta Zahav. Kesef is money, and we learned the rule that Maot Enam Konot. Oh, before we do, let's dedicate the learning to remember my father, Rav Simcha Yitzchak Kalman. Let's go back to our guys. Okay? We learned that if one of them was trying to sell a laptop, and one of them had money, okay? So let's put the gold to the side. The corn is a bit of a pain because there's more than one corn. Let's move the corn to the bottom. Okay? And I'm just trying to buy a laptop, okay? With my money. And I pay him my money. We learned that ma'ot enam konot. As even though I paid him the money and he took the money, the laptop is not mine yet until I actually do Mashiach. The laptop belongs to the seller. The item belongs to the seller. Actually, it's better with corn. We'll see in a second why. The corn belongs to the seller, okay, until I actually do Mashiach, until I acquire the corn. The corn, not the coin, even though I paid him. Whereas on the other hand, if I acquire the coin, corn, then he gets the coins and he gets the money. That's what we learn. Ma'ot enam konot. The question we have to learn is why? Okay? Why do we do we paskin ma'ot enam konot? So it's a machlok between Amorayim. This is a Gemara by Metzia Daf Memzayin and Mudbet. Says the Gemara, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said, Dvar Torah ma'ot konot. Meaning, me, the right, the money is konot. Umibnei ma'amru mishicha kona. Why did the Gemara, why did the Rabbanans come along and say, mishicha kona? You have to actually acquire the items. Gzeira, it's a gzeira. I'm going to go to the gzeira. We're going to skip a little bit. Gzeira. Shema tipod leka ba'ones. Okay? Maybe, let's see what's going to happen. Let's say, okay, let's go back to our guys. Okay? He's got a ton, he's got corn. This guy's got corn, but not five corn. He's got 5,000 bushels of corn. So I'm in the office and I come and I pay him the money. Okay? So, so if, let's say, the, 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 the concern is the following. He's got his money and it's in his warehouse. And he goes, there's a fire in the warehouse. What's he going to think to himself? Okay? This is Rabbi Yochanan. He's going to think to himself. There's a fire in the warehouse. If it's in the possession of the seller, Masar Nafsheh, Tarachu Matzil, he's gonna, ah, I gotta save the corn. I gotta go stop the fire. Because it's, I'm gonna lose money. Because even though he paid me already, it's still my corn. It'll be Elo, but if not, if I, once I get the money, Lo Masar Nafshe, Tarachu Matzil is not gonna come and save it. So therefore, says Rabbi Yochanan, Mide Oraita. Mide Oraita, Dvar Torah, Ma'od Kona. Really, money is Kona. But Chachamim said, no, Meshicha Kona. Only Meshicha. You have to actually acquire it. Otherwise, ma'od na konot. Okay, why? Because of the, we're afraid that if the, the that the the guy holding on to the produce isn't going to worry about it. And Reish Laki says no. Reish Laki says mishicha mifurechem in Torah. Torah says explicitly that mishicha is kona. You have to do actual kinyan and not ma'od konot. So let's go on. So now let's, with that introduction, let's go to our Mishnah. Kate said, how does it work that ma'od enam kono? This is an exact explanation of what we learned in the last Mishnah. Mashach imenu perot lonatan lo ma'od. Once the buyer uh, acquires the payroll, acquires the corn, and he didn't pay it, and no yachol achzubar. So that's like forget damages. Okay, let's go back to our case. Okay, the buyer took the corn. Okay, he bought the corn. He's Moshe. He did a meshicha, or he did a kinyan. He did an actual kinyan. He didn't pay yet, but then they found out the price, and they agreed on a set price. And then the price of the corn dropped precipitously, and that corn is now worth half. You know, there was a run on corn. Okay? Nonetheless, I know Yechol so he came back out. Why? Because, because he's Mashach Peirot. He did Mashicha. He didn't do Mashicha on money. But, Natan lo ma'od v'lo Mashach emenu Peirot. But if, if he gave the money, if the buyer paid money, but he didn't acquire the corn, if it was the other way around, okay? The buyer gave the money, and he gave the money, and remember, ma'od enam kono. And so therefore, the corn now drops in price, the buyer can say, ah, Yechol Achzobo. He can go back. Avalamru Chachamim don't like this. Even though he, uh, they agreed on a price, handshake, whatever, even though he can back out, Chachamim said, Misha para me dor ha-mabul umidor ha-palaga. He who paid, i.e., made them suffer, the anche dor ha-mabul, the people in the time of the great flood, umidor ha-palaga, that God, you know, dor ha-palaga is in, in the end of Noah, that God spread them all over the world. Hu atidli pira me misha eno omid bidu buro. He will pay back. He will, he will get payback from the person who doesn't Stand by his word. You don't need contracts. You don't need Mashiach. You don't need Kinyanim. You need people to follow their word. That's a Misha Parah. You ever heard that word? You get it. Like, you know, in the show, we give a Misha Berach. He who paid Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. So the Misha Parah is the opposite. It's like the, the evil 
Mishapara Bebeitin. Orinotar, they curse him in Beitin and they say, Mishapara Midora Maborl and Midora Palaga, he the God who paid back the generation of the flood and the generation of the split. Umi Anshay Stone Baramara, the people of Stone Baramara, they, they got paid. Umi Mitzriim Shishat Rubayam and from the Egyptians who, who, who were washed away in the sea. Who are Tili Parami Misha Eno Ome to be Duburo? He is, he will also pay back person, the people who don't stand, who don't keep their word. And if he says, nonetheless, I, I want to back out of the deal, what can you do? Ma'ot enam kono. Okay, Rabbi Shimon of Shiva says, no. I'm going to give you the Kahati's explanation. The Bartunur gives a different explanation. Rabbi Shimon says, no. If the buyer, if the buyer paid, even though he didn't do Meshicha, okay, the, 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 the seller can back out, because Ma'ot enam kono, but the buyer cannot back out. That's the Kahati's explanation of Rabbi Shimon's position. All right, we'll stop here. Dedicated learning to memory. Oh, we did it already. We'll do it again. Dedicated learning to memory. My father, Rav Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman.